Doug is known to many of you, but he has been in and out of government, uh, Asia scholar, <coughs> now with the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace. Let's, let's, let's use the word peace. For peace. Doug, please. It's always hopeful to talk about peace. Um, I, there have been, at this wonderful conference, there have been lots of uh, valuable thoughts expressed, and I think that most of the things that uh, I know about have been well covered. Uh, I think people walk away from this conference uh, quite well informed. K Kevin Rudd yesterday at lunch uh, presented the Chinese priorities in ways that I, with which I cannot quarrel. I think it was a uh, tour de force in you know, describing things in China. Um, as I begin my remarks today, I'd like to say, remind that Asia is far more diverse than Europe and other regions. Uh, we tend to forget that. We, if you're far away from Asia, you sort of lump it all together. But it's a very diverse region, less di disposed to coalitions than, than most. Um, for a long time, the United States in the post-war world managed relations in the Asia Pacific quite successfully, prosperity surged, peace reigned for the most part, except in a couple of wars we were involved in. Um, and we used the method called hub and spokes, where the US was the hub and we had spoke relationships with the Republic of Korea, with Japan, with the Philippines, Thailand, and others. And we were the, the unifying force because they were not among themselves so unified. Well, you take that hub away, and then you get a lot of uh, units out there without spokes to bring them together. And this, my first observation today is on three broad trends in the region, is that the movement of US policy with respect to China from engagement to containment is eroding those spokes and, and making it difficult for the various countries, each of which have their own relations with China, to sustain the kind of tension that will come if they also try to remain close to the United States. There's, uh, uh, trade policy is, uh, is an example of this. The US has not reconciled its trade policy between facilitating business opportunities within China, which would by definition deepen the connection between the two business communities and peoples, and uh, pursuing decoupling technological suppression denial of high ac access to high technology parts, semiconductors and the like. Um, that both are being pursued. President Trump on the one hand seems to be looking for a, a quick gains on the trade front, but he's afraid to probe deeply into China for having fears of the defend, how to defend such an agreement against uh, opposition in the United States. And but with below President Trump, there's a, a, a very broad consensus within the government to try to dismantle the many uh, ways in which we do cooperate with China for fear that China will overtake the US technologically, militarily, and economically in the decades ahead. Um, second observation, and this may draw some distinctions with uh, Professor Ai's uh, remarks. The administration of Donald Trump has articulated with the idea emerging originally from Japan of the free and open Indo-Pacific. Um, this is a direct descendant of President Obama's rebalance to Asia, which was articulated in 2011. I was a consultant on the original rebalance to Asia as an outside party, and I know well that it was designed to help President Obama draw down the expense and the forces of, uh, in Afghanistan and Iraq in order to shift the weight of American capability to counterbalance the rise of China. I think everyone in this room knows we never succeeded at that in that period. The, it, it, materially, you can point to a few technical changes in the American dispositions in the Asia Pacific, but in fact, whatever drawdowns have taken place in Southwest, uh, Southwest Asia, MENA, have not been transferred to East Asia. Nonetheless, China has been given a signal that the US intended to contain China without the US following up on it. I think the free and open Indo-Pacific so far is, is a matter of sloganeering internationally, which has similarly not produced a result. In fact, even under Donald Trump, we've doubled down, we now have forces back in Saudi Arabia that we had taken out a few years ago. Uh, the, the commitment to the, the, the Persian Gulf region remains quite strong and new resources have not been made available to the Asia Pacific to provide the counterbalance 
to China's rise. Um, within the United States government, there has been some adjustment. It's kind of a symbolic kind of adjustment for the free and open Indo-Pacific. A few offices have been created, a few appointments have been made, but none of this translates back into capabilities in the region. And unfortunately, were we to try to go transfer some of these capabilities to the region, we would be stressing relations with alliance partners who, under pressure from China and in deep depend codependency with China economically, may be reluctant. A mention was just made by Ambassador Kim of the possibility of INF dispositions in the Asia Pacific. I think that's pretty remote, both in time and in principle, but it's a real concern that we may be asking countries to, to very small countries, very densely populated countries, to uh, position weapons systems uh, in their midst. This would be extremely controversial and difficult to achieve under the best of circumstances. And, and we know that China would work very hard to make it painful for anyone to accept them. As US relative strength has declined uh, across the board with the rise of other powers, the, um, the US has seen a shift in correlation of forces, and it's demanding more of the allies at a time when it can offer them less. Or in fact, it's demanding more in performance while demanding also more in support for the hosting of American forces in Korea, in Japan, and elsewhere. A, a third broad trend being reflected in Asia, I think, is the global balkanization, which has resulted from rapid, extensive globalization. And or people are pulling back from the, the forces of globalization, uh, even in the Asia Pacific, which has pr prospered tremendously from this. Japan and Korea, we've just talked a lot about this with Ambassador Kim, Japan and Korea are pulling apart. I, I'm increasingly of the mind that we're not going to be able to put this back together again someday. Uh, earlier panels discussed how uh, the choice for South Korea is particularly painful because of the very heavy economic reliance on China and the pressure China has put on them uh, with respect to defense measures taken to protect against missiles from North Korea. The um, uh, Myanmar, which was a few years ago seen as a uh, emerging from dictatorship and becoming a, 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 an example of the rise of democracy in the region, has gone into retreat. It's a, it's a very sad example. North Korea is about, I think, in agreement with Professor Kim, uh, North Korea is about to embark on provocations in order to press Washington back into talks and into concessions on the UN Security Council sanctions, which are strangling North Korea's industry. North Korea has made do on its commercial economy. It's getting by with some market reforms, but the state-owned enterprises are starved for resources that people are unemployed, and they're not able to act as a militarized state in their normal way, and they're very eager to get this back. Firing a few missiles and maybe even a nuclear test would be well within their interest to get the attention of, of President Trump before he enters the election year in January. In some, we've, the, the great irony is that the U.S., in dealing with a rise in China, needs its allies and friends more than ever. And yet we're making it harder for our friends and allies to work with us more than many, many years. And this is going to present a tremendous dilemma, not just for the uh, current uh, Obama, excuse me, the current Trump administration, but for whichever administration succeeds it. Thank you. Doug, thank you very, very much. Um, Join in that. I come away with this image of the spinning bicycle wheel completely spinning apart with the spokes going in all directions.